Hello and welcome to History in 7 Facts, a show in which we talk about some awesome episodes from humanity's past. Check out this playlist to watch the entire series. And please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. We tend to believe that steam engines came about with the industrial revolution of the 18th century, but this is false. The concept of steam engines has been around for nearly 2000 years and ancient engineers possessed the knowledge to build them. One of the greatest cities to be visiting in the 1st century AD was Alexandria. This was the technological and intellectual hub of the era. The Great Library of Alexandria containing some 500,000 volumes contained a vast chunk of humanity's collective knowledge. But the library was only a part of a much larger institution, the Museon or Museum of Alexandria, an institution dedicated to bringing together scholars, so basically a giant university. By the way, Museon means institution of the muses and it's the source of the modern day museum. Thanks to this institution, Alexandria became a bastion of knowledge and home to thousands of scholars. The Egyptians might have built the pyramids, Sumerians and Babylonians created math and the calendar, but the concept of ideas originated in Alexandria. It was here that different concepts from different nations came together and science and philosophy blended them together. It's no wonder then that steam engines were invented here. Today ancient Greece is more known for their contributions to philosophy, politics and the arts. We don't realize that Greeks also came up with many practical inventions too. They built lighthouses, canals and tunnels, steam engines, pumps, presses, clocks and even automated machinery. But why is that? Why aren't they known for their practical inventions too? To put it simply, it's because of slavery. They didn't need to put in practice many of their inventions because they had sufficient manpower to do the work. Instead, they concentrated on the science of things, the proofs of concepts and not the economic gains. This explains why they never thought of using steam energy and neither did their successors. In this story, there is one man that really stands out, Hiran of Alexandria. He was the first in history to create a rudimentary steam-powered engine, the Aeolipile. Hiran or Hero was one of Alexandria's best mathematicians and engineers who lived in the 1st century AD. He was also a showman, he created many mechanical wonders to all crowds. But he also created practical things, devices that in his mind would better people's lives. The Aeolopile, meaning the ball of Aeolus, god of air and wind, is a steam turbine which spins when the central water container is heated. Torque is produced by steam jets exiting the turbine, much like a jet or rocket engine. Yes, this principle was to be used 2000 years later to move airplanes. But was Huron's design any good? Well, for a proof of concept, it worked like a charm. But modern engineers recreated Huron's engine and found out that it wasn't efficient. Due to friction and loss of steam, the device would need too much heat to put it to any use. Even if built according to the highest standards of the time, this steam engine's output would have been too small to be practical enough. In his scientific paper, Pneumatica, Huron demonstrated his knowledge about pistons and simple pumps. One of his inventions was an organ operated by a wind wheel, making it the first instance in history of a wind-powered machine. But he never made the connection between these inventions. By using pistons and steam, he could have created a much more efficient engine. It was only in the 18th century that pistons were to be used in such a way. But in all likelihood, the metallurgy of the time couldn't have created sufficiently precise pistons anyway. But if they could have done it, if they could have realized the potential, that would have probably changed the entire history of the entire world in ways we can't even imagine. As I said, Huron was also a showman. He created many devices to entertain the people. He created an entirely mechanical play, almost 10 minutes in length, powered by a binary-like system of ropes, knots and simple machines. 
He once again used steam to create a device that would open and close the temple doors through heat. The first vending machine was also one of his constructions. When a coin was introduced via a slot on the top of the machine, a set amount of holy water was dispensed. He created all of this and much more 2000 years ago. For all intents and purposes, this man was a genius of his time. Most of Huron's inventions were never put to use on a large scale. Many of his concepts and ideas had to be reinvented almost two millennia later. But for Huron and his fellow scholars, it was the learning part, the discovery that was much more important. He and others like him were trying to uncover the mysteries of reality. So just because their inventions never changed the world, that doesn't mean their ingeniosity can be disconsidered. Under different circumstances, in a different society, Huron and scholars like him could have changed the world. They didn't. But they did prove that our ability to create and wonder stretch all the way back to the beginning of history. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. I hope to see you next time. Bye.